right, so moving on to the new job of the day, uh, I am looking at our roof vent, which uh, was previously installed, uh, and I've decided it's not going to be any use to us. It's a, um, it's like a rotating um, spinning top, but it's it's totally in the wrong place. Um, and what I've started doing is actually started stripping it out. Um, I don't know if you remember, but I basically had these three, um, these three bits apply on the underside, like so. Uh, and what I've done, I've literally just levered them out using a um, uh, a nail bar. Really handy piece of tool. Um, and literally just like hooked it out. And it's uh, popped, it looks like uh, some sort of Sikaflex material. It's super strong. It took, it took quite a while to actually get it out. Uh, and annoyingly, of course, left with all this sort of crap under the, on the underside. And I say, this vent had to go, it just, it wasn't working. And um, plus it's totally in the wrong place because I want to put some solar panels on the roof and, it's, and you know, plus it's so ugly. So I'm going to have to probably use a multi-tool, I think, to um, cut away all the bits of timber that's stuck to the roof. Um, I'm going to stick and remove this top section. This is going to be annoying as well because that's all uh, sealed in as you can see and then the, the roof itself is is even worse so um, actually I'll have a quick look at that so as you can see there's a massive seal around the outside which is going to be a pain in the backside to remove and that's, that's the top off. And that was the, that was the spinning top that rotated around. See, it's all damaged and, yeah, it's a piece of crap, really. So, um, so yeah, that's going to be my challenge now, really, is getting all this crap off. I'm going to um, put a glass, glass fibre sheet over the top and seal it all in and make a good um, good good nice seal around there um, and hopefully I can do that <laughs> before it rains <laughs> it's uh, no it's quick drying stuff I'm actually using a you know like a resin uh, isopan fiberglass repair kit which is um, which is really cool um, very much like the repair kit we use for the, the holes in the roof and also in the floor um, so yeah, we're gonna have a look at that and uh, see how it goes. see um, I've managed to get it out and um, I've managed to give it a little bit of a clean up which is good it's in preparation for the uh, fiberglass going on uh, annoyingly you've got this like, rib section here that they've actually cut through whether you can actually see that turn sideways yeah rib section there which is really annoying um, because it makes it harder to you know, put the fiberglass across so what I'm going to have to do, I think, I'm going to put a, a timber, uh, when I put the fiberglass on, put a timber in and push the fiberglass up um, to the top section there to actually create a, a rib and then just create a, uh, an upright just to hold the timber in uh, for it to wrap around uh, and seal it in. Because on the other side, I want to do, use the, um, the P40 again just to seal, seal the top section in because there's going to be a slight rib. 
Um, yeah, so that's uh, that's where we're at now. Really, it's uh, it's just doing the preparation work for the, uh, the fiberglass kit. Yeah, so this is the Bisopan fiberglass kit, and so it does come with all the gobbins again. So you get your gloves. A load of resin, you get your fiberglass sheets. So I don't actually actually need to use all of this, but yeah, you get big, you get two of these. So there's the other one. Um, there's your hardener, a bit like the P40 and P38 mixer. And then inside there you've got your um, the applicator and stirrers. Yeah. And the easy step by step guide. So yes, yeah, so that's what I'm gonna be using. Um, it only takes about 20 minutes or so to go off, so hopefully, yeah, should be all good. Alright, so the, um, the fiberglass has gone on, and I've, so I've put this uh, upright in. Uh, so just measured it so it was about you know, 10, 10, 15 mil um, longer than what I needed it to be with on the, the base of this timber at the very top. Um, so the timber, I, I literally just turned, turned sideways in order to actually push it up in order to create this rib section that we pointed out before. Um, and what I'm going to do is you know, it's, it's it's still a little bit tacky, but it's you know it's pretty pretty hard. Um, but I'm going to just remove this timber now because the last thing I want to do is end up with that that timber stuck to it, and it's going to end up breaking it off when when I take it off. So it's hard enough now that I can actually should be able to take that off and um, yeah keep it in place. So I'm just going to take 
breaks away. Okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, as you can see, it's created a, a rib. A rib, nice rib just there to actually follow the outline of the outside of the van. And then we'll be able to, um, once that's fully set, be able to clean that all up. Nice, sand it all down, and make a nice finish. And that, that'll, um, yeah, stay been nice, but they say it's all going to be covered up in the inside of that, so it's not going to be, you know, create too much work in the inside. But the outside is the more important. So yeah, so that's that's where you can see that's where the buttons come in, and you can see there's a you know a bit of a a trough in the bottom there so what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to fill that all in uh, in order to actually come parallel with the, with the roof like so um, I'm going to use P40 because it's a no fiberglass based filler in the in the groove and I might finish it off with a bit of P38 depending on we'll see how that all looks cool let it dry. Okay, so it's uh, it's set nicely. Um, as you can see from the top here, it's uh, you know, glowing because it's uh, obviously lets through a lot of light. But it, what it does, it just seals in. That really um, makes it nice and waterproof. Um, and as you can see by that, the contour is really nice. Just there, for it runs right the way through which is really cool. I'm happy with uh, how that's come out. So what I'm going to do really just to finish um, off the inside is I'm going to sand it down um, and make it just like a sort of a, a nicer finish. Um, I'm not going to bother with the P38 for the inside because it doesn't have to be you know, really aesthetically pleasing because it's never going to be seen again. Um, but what it's all about is making sure it's nice and watertight. So I'm just going to give that a really good sand up and you know, get away all the rough edges and you know, make sure that's nice. Okay, so this is the um, the P40 filler uh, for body holes basically. Um, so I'm going to use this in order to actually put it inside this um, cavity hole. Um, so it's like a, a fiberglassy mix inside which you mix with a hardener, like so. And when it does, it goes off rock solid inside the hole. Um, I'm gonna be using a mixing sheet. So this is actually on the kit, so you can draw a line for B, which is for um, P40, and A is for P38, which is more of a, uh, a surface filler. So we're gonna use uh, P40 and fill in the uh, fill in the gap too, isn't it? So only mix as much as you think you need rather than mixing too much because you have loads of excess over and you can't really do anything with it. colour all the hardness mixed in. Okay.
So what you're looking to do here really is just apply it so that it is just below the surface. As you can see I've got too much on here. Take it off. Then we can finish it with a P38. Okay, so the, um, the filler has completely gone off, nice and solid, just leaving a little bit extra um, in order to actually put the P38 on, which is the, the finishing um, coat that I wanted. So what I'm going to do now is sand this all down, make this a nice contact point for the P38 to go on top, create a you know, finishing, finishing top. So this is the the Isopan filler here. Um, this comes in a sachet because it's part of a kit, um, but you can get it in the tin like the P40 or in a tube. Um, and then you mix it with the hardener just like before. But instead of using line B, you use line A because you don't need as much hardener. Because, it's, uh, because yeah, you're not going to be using as much. So just going to go ahead and. Start sanding. Okay, so we're going to mix the P38 this time, so it's going to have like a grey consistency. So this time, we are looking to just get slightly over the top of where our points are. This is a lot softer stuff so it can actually be sanded back a lot easier than the fiberglass filler. Right, that's, uh, that's going off already so as much as I can work with it. It needs more, I'll have to play with it afterwards. Okay, so this is the P38. It's um, it's gone off nice and hard now. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to sand this down. Um, I'm gonna use a finer grit sandpaper. Um, so this is a P180, and then I'm actually gonna use a finer grit like P um, 500 at the sun that down because it's going to give it a nice finish because then it can be it can be primed ready for uh, painting so these are what I did before these ones here so these have you know, been finished already this is where the roof lights were so they need to be primed like so it's a nice smooth finish Okay.